So the winter barley again, the summer sown. Belfry for us is our number one variety. It's a hybrid. It's the shortest hybrid we have. Certainly the stiffest straw. Very good, excellent disease resistance and an excellent overall package. I suppose, look, if somebody was to say to me, Tim, I've never grown a hybrid before, would you suggest a variety? Belfry would be the first word I'd say. We have not been able to beat it in terms of overall, all round, pound for pound fighter is Belfry, okay? It's a controlled variety with the department. It's the one and the longest running barley that they have been testing uh, hybrid six rows outside of Cassia. And it's the one that's been consistently out yielding the controls each year. As I said, it's, the, it's our main offering to people from the hybrids this year. And I suppose, look, the hybrids have the benefit of if the going gets tough, they're able to out yield the competition. Be that a take all situation, be that uh, even a BYDV situation, uh, not putting them up against the BYDV tolerant barley, but certainly the hybrids are able to overcome the virus a little bit better than anything else. Armadillo is the next one. It's slightly taller, it's more like bazooka, needs a little bit more uh, love and attention around plant growth regulator time but certainly has an extra couple of points yield on Belfry. We see that in the trials and we see it in the field. Grain quality, similar to Belfry, not quite as good, uh, but certainly if you want to get your big yields, Armadillo is the one to choose. Canyon is common to the recommended list, we hope in the next year or two. It's a very high grain quality. So Cassia is the standard, Canyon will be very close to us, probably won't beat us, but certainly it's 10, 12 pints ahead of it in yield, okay? So for high KPH, out of the six rows of the hybrids, Canyon is the best barley we have to offer. It's going to be better in terms of its KPH than any other two row and similar to Cassia. That's where we, we'll, we'll pitch it. Joyu is a BYDV tolerant barley. It's on the market now five years. It's about 10, 12% of the seed. Very happy customers with Joyu. Where we like Joyo is, is that when we're sowing a thousand plots of winter barley and you're out scoring them at harvest time. So what we do is Dennis generally is running the combine and the weighing system and the quality system. And one of us then will do a score on straw. But you can pick out the Joyo plots from the cob of the combine. You don't need to know where you are in the field, which is nice to know because you're always saying, oh, Joyo's coming next. You can see it coming at you. The reason is, number one, it stands. And number two, it's got this kind of like a C effect of grains, okay? It cuts more like wheat than like barley in terms of how it comes across the knife. A really decent barley in terms of yield. Weaknesses would be on mildew. Very good grain quality, similar to Belfry, but it's got the virus tolerance. Now, to explain virus tolerance in a couple of seconds, because it is quite important, and I'll direct you to page 10. And on the bottom right-hand corner is a graph. And what that is, is Joyu's performance in the department's trials. So it's not my data, it's the Department of Agriculture's data. And all I've done is I've taken it across the five years, okay? So I put a star over 2019 and 2022 because they were the years that farmers and merchants were ringing me complaining about yellow color in barley up and down the country, okay? And they're the years that Joyu jumped everything else. So it's a very simple story. Uh, the Department of Agriculture don't set out to prove BYDV tolerance. That's not their job. Their job is to approve a variety that's good enough to get on the Irish list, okay? That's a big enough hurdle to get on. But that's the data that happened to those five years. The years that we didn't have BYDV, so 2023, 21, uh, 2020, you can see Joyu is the same as the controls. The control varieties, Cassia, Infinity, and Belfry, okay? So Joyu is similar to all the other barleys on the list those years. Give it BYDV and it jumps. Is that clear enough? And that's the same for Arcade, which is a two row BYDV. It's the same for Buzzard, which is a hybrid BYDV. And it's the same for Integral, which is coming to the list as well, which is a six row BYDV. This is new, it's coming to the market. It's Arcade, it's a two row. Huge grain, uh, take a look at it. These plots don't have turple on them because they're sown in December and we wanted to see could we get a little bit of lodging on them, okay? If you're looking at this and you're saying, Tim, it's a bit tall, 
certainly take a look at it in the next session because where it's got the shortener, it's quite short, okay? It does respond very well to shortener. There's about 18% of the seed is arcade. It's got two genes for BYDV or viruses. It's still tolerant, it's not resistant, okay? And there is a difference. So it's tolerant barley. This has what we call YD2. That's the gene that's evolved. This one has YD2, but Arcade has YD2 and YD3. So there's two genes. Uh, does that make it double better? No, it doesn't. What it's like is it's getting the cake with the cherry on top. That's all you're getting extra. But it does give you a little kick on yield and it does give you a little kick on probably you know, if you really make a mistake and sow it on the 15th of September and you don't spray it until Patrick's Day, that will be much better than anything else in terms of virus. Okay, just a little bit better. It's claim to fame when it comes on to the recommended list, hopefully September will be the size of the grain. Huge, huge grain. And it's probably why we picked it out because visually when you look at it, it's impressive as a two row. Okay, 